What is the biggest thing that you've learned about these guys through two games? Oh, man. What, what a heck of a question. Um, uh, you know, we got some guys who can make shots. And so even when, you know, we don't play as well as we want to, man. I, I tell you all all the time for years, last couple of years, I've said I got this friend, Tim Maloney. And uh, we would be in staff meetings and we'd have all these plans, how we need to guard this, how we need to do that, what we need to do. And, and he would be quiet the whole meeting. And then at the end of the meeting, he'd get up and go, I hope we make shots. <laughs> that's all he'd say. I hope we make shots. <laughs> and he would walk out the meeting, you know, and, and that's, you know, what it boils down to is, man, if you got to make shots. So you got to do some other things too. But if you make shots, it solves a lot of problems. And then with LSU coming in, obviously there's a very notable member of that roster who played two years here. You guys, I'm sure, still have a very good relationship. A lot of the guys that are on the team right now don't have that relationship, but some do. How is that kind of being handled? Oh, you know, no, we haven't really said much about it. You know, we we love Cam Carter. You know, Cam th did a lot for our program. Um, he believed in us as a staff when, uh, you know, you know a lot of people didn't. And, um, you know, I felt like, and we believed in him, you know. Uh, and he, for two years, he was a really, really good player for us. And, with the nature of college basketball, he got to, to capitalize on that and be able to go back, be close to home to his family too. So, you know, it was a double blessing for him. So, man, super thankful for Cam's time here and, you know, absolutely love him and uh, just hope he doesn't play well. <laughs> you think a, a chore will be on track to play this week? Yeah, oh man, he's, yeah, his, you know, he, uh, you know, had a few good days now, and mentally he's in a good spot, and physically he's in the back. So, um, yeah, I, I expect him to play. So I want to ask a little bit more about Brendan. Um, I mean, you've noted that he didn't play a ton at Villanova, or at least not the minutes he's getting now. Is there anything that surprised you about the way he's been able to just get in here and contribute as much as he had in a larger role? No, nah, not at all. This, I, I expected the Joker to play like this from his freshman year. You know, I watched him in high school, um, his toughness, his competitiveness, his shot-making ability, you know, um, you know, just uh, he's just a, a gamer, man, like a, a winner. And, uh, you know, and uh, so um, him playing the way he's playing and, you know, given knowing the type of confidence that his high school coaches had in him, one of them being his dad, you know, um, you know, I just know that if you breathe confidence into him, he can do it. And now I'm challenging him to, you know, be, be a defender, right? Like not be the guy that the other team thinks they can pick on. And um, and so, and I believe he's going to respond to that. Coach, looking back on the game, how excited were you uh, for By and what he did and his potential moving forward? Yeah, you know, um, Bai's been practicing well. He's been uh, doing a lot of the extra things that he needed to do to put himself in a position to play. He's extra lifts. He's he's taking his nutrition seriously. I think he's up to 215 pounds now and um, just making really good decisions off the floor that's allowing him to to be in, able to, to be productive on the floor. And, um, you know, like th this morning, like, he had a really good practice today and uh, he told me, he said, uh, I ate a, a real breakfast this morning. I didn't just eat fruit, you know. And so he's taking steps towards getting to where he needs to get to. And um, it's a growth process process for him. And um, just, you know, so a very, very happy for him. You know, you tell guys hard work pays off and it comes at different times. But to see it, you know, coming about, it's exciting for him. I understand Doug's played a lot of basketball, but it's new here. Do you feel like he's kind of starting to get settled to where he needs to be? Uh, yeah, he's he's growing. He's growing, um, you know, and, uh, you know, just w playing the point guard for us is a little different than playing the point guard elsewhere. And there's a whole lot more responsibilities and um, seeing the game the way I see it and, and then him learning that. And then, you know, once he embraces that in which he has and he's really, like, starting to take some ownership of some things and then I'll get to start seeing the game the way he sees it and then we can see 
it continued to, to rise. But um, you know, it's uh, uh, I, I, you know, it's it's gonna take some time. You know, this is it's a process, and so um, you know, I, I I'm I'm not disappointed of where we're at, and uh, I'm excited about where we're heading. Could you say similar things about Ugo? I know you know he feel he has much more in the tank, so to speak. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, it's gonna take it takes time, you know, and but every, every guy has to do their job, you know, and um, players determine playing time, and so. Um, you know, it's it's competitive, man. You know, you can only put five on the floor at one time, and so you know every day those guys have to come to practice and bring it. And they'll, if they do their jobs, they they determine the playing time. In the past, whenever you would be preparing for games early in the season, you normally had the the year's footage before to kind of look back on, look at that film. Now with teams being so jumbled and everything, how much harder is it to prepare for an LSU team that's only played a couple games? No, that's that's a really good question, and uh, and it's a good point. Um, the good thing is, like, it, it's harder when it's new players and a new coach. You know, um, you know, Coach McMahon's been there for three years now. This is our third year playing them. Um, so we got a little feel of what they like to do. Maybe we'll do things a little bit different. Obviously, you don't have Will Baker, so, you know, it's not a – a pick and pop from the five as much as might be a, a pick and roll a lot of things and so it makes it a little bit different new new players good things we can go pull some old footage and see what it is they like to do and uh, but the same struggle we have in preparing for them teams have in pre preparing for us so we're all on an equal playing field what are maybe one or two areas specifically that you really most like to improve on right now uh, defensive ball screen coverage, you know, we, we have to get better. We didn't do a very good job last game on that. And then rebounding, you know, if we can – our first shot defense, I think it's I, – I don't want – we're, we're top five in the country, our first shot defense, right? And it's just if we can go retrieve the basketball. And so if we can do that, that that's really going to help us. If you could put in, put in, in a uh, kind of a thumbnail sketch – Tell us a little bit about LSU and, and the challenge they present. Um, you know, the five-out offense that they run, you know, multiple guys out there who can make shots. Sears, the, the, the guard, I mean, really, really good. I think he was number two in the country in ball screen offense last year, uh, only behind Doug McDaniel. <laughs> you know, and, uh, I mean, he's just uh, a terrific player, and you can't, like, feed him a steady diet of one thing because he's going to figure it out for you. And then, you know, obviously Cam can make shots, man. And, uh, you know, just so when you have two guards who can do that and and then Jalen Reed. Uh, and Jalen played AAU basketball for one of my best friends, Omar Carter, God rest his soul, you know. And uh, so I've known him for a while and uh, just, just a terrific talent. They have some older guys too and um, who know how to play and um, – and their third year together with coaching, so um, they they pose they pose a lot of problems, and they're always going to guard you, right? They're always going to compete and guard you, and that's you know. Uh, so it, it it'll be a great challenge. I'm thankful that we get to play them at home, you know, and and with our crowd, you know, and um, so I'm excited about that. Yeah. What are you speaking of the crowd? What are you what are you expecting for this game? Man, I, I'm I'm expecting a sellout. That's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting, you know, every seat filled and the student section to be rocking and, um, you know, you know, just super, super, super excited about that. Do you have any insights so far about anyone, if anyone will redshirt this year? Yeah, no, we're not redshirting anybody. David Castillo, um, how important is it for him to learn and play along with older guards like CJ and Doug? No, it, it's really good for him, right? Like the this this struggle that he is going through, right? Like every every player goes through it and has to go through it, you know. And and he's playing a hard position, and he's and it's not easy to play the point guard for me, right? It's not. And um, but you know, I've been blessed to coach like at least eight all-conference point guards, right? So there's a, you know, there's something to it, right? And so, but, uh, you know, I, I 
I, like I told our staff the other day, like every time he shoots it, I believe it's going in. So I, I want him to to fail aggressively if he's going to fail. Like don't don't fail passively. And so, but so it's really good that he has CJ and Doug. Uh, but but he he's he's going to be just fine. He's going to be just fine. I you know I expect him to uh, because he works. He works at it. And so. What makes it so hard to be a point guard for your team? I just demand a lot of them, right? Like, they get a whole lot of freedom because people always talk about, man, he lets his guards get off. Well, y'all not with me every day in practice, right? And uh, I demand a lot of them. Every turnover is their fault. Every time a play is ran incorrectly, it's their fault, right? You know, um, they have to be able to do something and uh, it not work and then have the confidence when I get on them about it to do it again and make it work and then smile at me and wink. You know, I mean, that's so you got to have that kind of confidence, like, because uh, otherwise, like, coaches hate. Um, I would say, co for me, I, I don't want a guy who does everything I tell him to do and a guy who does nothing I tell him to do. There's got to be, like, a little bit in between because they're, they're players, right? And they see something, they make a play. And so what I saw, and if it doesn't work out, they, they hit me with the my bad coach. And then the next time, they, they go make that play again. And, and so it takes a certain level of confidence and mental toughness and an emotional maturity to be able to handle what we do every day at practice. But if you can do that, then on game day, Right, you get to play 40 minutes of freedom. Turnovers were up a little bit the last game, but uh, do you see that just as typical of early games that's going to maybe be a little bit up and down until maybe the roles are a little more defined and everything? I don't think it had anything to do with defining roles. I think we were up 20 and the guys like relaxed and we had some um, like just careless turnover, some like not being strong with the ball and getting it slapped out of our hands or a dribble handoff that, you know, we were lackadaisical on how we were, you know, going from one spot to the next, the defender tipped the ball and, you know, jumping in the air and throwing some passes because we were up. And uh, so um, we have to learn how to handle success and build on leads.